Hello, I'm Carl, and this is Pro Cycles Tech Talk. Today we're coming from the King TW Studios, and we're going to talk about carburation. We get a lot of questions about carburation: is, is what jet should I use? What's D cell pop? What's the difference between a vacuum carb and a flat slide carb? What if my elevation changes? We're going to go over all these little details and hopefully get you an answer to go in the right direction. First thing we want to touch on is D cell pop. If you have a motorcycle that's carbureted, you're going to have diesel pop, especially a big single cylinder. You're going along and you chop the throttle and you hear this pop, this crackle, and you think, what is that? Is this hurting my bike? How do I make that stop? It's very simple. Let's look at what causes it. You're going along, you chop the throttle. That's a sudden shot to the motor. The RPMs are still turning big, but now we've shut the airflow and the vacuum created by that piston sucks the fuel through like the low speed in the air fuel mixture circuit, goes through the motor, hits the hot exhaust pipe and goes it's very annoying. It doesn't hurt a thing in the motor. One thing we've asked is, can I change the jetty to get rid of this? Yes, you can. We can lean out the circuits dramatically and change the jetty so it greatly reduces D cell pop. D cell pop will never go away 100% with a carbureted bike, but it reduces a lot. But by leaning out the circuit this much, the bike runs terrible on acceleration, so we don't want to do that. What we have discovered, if I'm riding along and just cruising down the road and I go to slow down, if I roll off the throttle, if I take just a moment to roll off the throttle, that greatly reduces the shock to the system, really reduces the vacuum effect on it, and causes a great reduction in the D cell pop. It almost all goes away a little bit there and it's not annoying. Again, if you have a motorcycle that's carbureted, especially a big single cylinder motorcycle, D cell pop's gonna happen. That's the nature of the beast. Next, let's take a look at what's the difference between a vacuum operated slide carburetor and a flat slide carburetor. Most all the manufacturers, Suzuki, Honda, Kawasaki, they all have a vacuum slide, excuse me, yeah, they all have a vacuum slide operated carb. What happens is when your cable's adjusted there and you turn on the gas, you open up the throttle, it opens up a butterfly valve. That starts the fuel flow a little bit as the fuel flow increases, the vacuum increases, and the slide, which is vacuum operated, goes up. There comes a vacuum back there, pulls the slide up, and then you get in the power that you initially requested. Takes a moment or two. This is something all the manufacturers do, and then when you chop the throttle, it takes a moment for that slide to go back down. They do this for numerous reasons, and again, it's, it's what's equipped with all the bikes. You can switch up to a flat slide carburetor. Flat slide carburetor, the cable is mounted directly to the control for the slide, so when you turn the throttle a little bit or a lot, the slide starts to move. You are in control 100%. Also, there's a chrome rod on the side. I'm gonna turn it over here a little bit and we'll see the white plunger. When we turn the cables on, the plunger goes down, hits that chrome rod, moves it down. That creates a momentary squirt through the throat of the motorcycle, through the throat of the carburetor into the intake port. It's just a momentary squirt, but that's what gives it a kick in the pants to get your game going. This is a much more efficient system. This is a much more preferred system, and it's the single biggest improvement you could do to your motorcycle. So if you've got a bike, KLRs, XRs, DRs, something that we make a flat slide carb conversion for, get it. You're going to love the results. Another thing we get asked about is all these jetting companies. There's a lot of jet companies out there, ourselves included, that make jet kits for motorcycles. How come all the numbers are different? This company says use a number 150. This guy says use a 155. What we had found out is all the jet manufacturers, Suzuki, Honda, all of them also, use their own sequencing of numbers. So someone's number 150 main jet's gotta be bigger or smaller than the next guy's 150 main jet. There's no cross-reference. We don't know which one's which, but what we have found out is whichever jet kit you use, follow the instructions on that jet kit using only those jets. Don't mix or match or go off of uh, someone's, oh, try one of these. You'll only move backwards in getting improvement in carburation. One of the things we also ask is needle adjustment. Look at needle adjustment, look at air fuel, look at the type of jetting that's gonna be recommended with the jet kit you get. There's three stages to the jetting in the motorcycle. There's idle and low RPM, there's mid-range, and then there's top RPM. So we look at the idle. The air fuel mixture screw controls idle, and that's pretty much idle to where you're just letting out the clutch it's starting to go. The pilot jet beats the air fuel mixture screw, and that's what controls that RPM zone, very low. The mid-range is controlled by the needle. As the slide goes up and down, it moves the needle up and down inside the needle jet. 
This is the high percentage operation you're going to be in your bike. Everybody rides in mid-range. Nobody really rides at red line. Nobody really rides in idle. The mid-range is the most important adjustment you can make in jetting your motorcycle. And a proper needle with the correct taper is the key element to getting this right. Once you're about three-quarters, seven-eighths throttle, the main jet takes over at that point. Again, when the main jet takes over, the needle, the pilot jet, the air fuel mixer screw, they are spectators. They have no influence whatsoever is going on from three quarters on, the main jet's in control, and that's what's going to get you going down the road at, at a much better performance. Also, people ask, when installing a jet kit, many of the manufacturers recommending opening up the air box. We take a look at the carburetor here. That's a 40 millimeter. A lot of the big manufacturers use 40 millimeters for their carburetors. The snorkel on top is not big enough to allow for this when it's at full volume going. We need to get more air into the air box. Doesn't matter if we take the side door off or open up the top. We recommend the top because it's quieter. But we need to get more airflow into the carburetor so the jetting and everything will perform correctly and you can get 100% value out of the jet kit and exhaust system you've installed. Other people ask, what about elevation changes? Most of these carburetors, the, the, the BSTs, the vacuum carbs, the TM40 flat slide carbs, they're a very forgiving carb. The carbs from Makuni pretty much operate real nice from sea level up to five, 6,000 feet. The jetting's going to say the same. Once you get to 6,000, a little bit above that, you may feel a little bit sluggish. It feels a little bit lean. We've got less air flowing through. If you're going over a mountain pass, just go over it. Once you get on the other side, the bike will start carburetting correctly again, feel okay. If you're gonna be at that elevation, six, 7,000 feet or higher for days or so, at that point, whatever the jet kits calls for specifications, let's go one step leaner on the main jet, one step leaner on the needle. That's all you'd really have to adjust and that should put you in the money. You'll be okay at that elevation. Again, jetting set for zero to like 6,000 feet should operate just fine. Other folks ask, how can I tell if I'm too lean or too rich? Again, the, the easiest way to tell that uh, we found is mileage. People try and look at plugs. Reading plugs is a lost science. It's something that, that was, so people used to read plugs years ago. But today's gasolines are designed for, and you've seen the commercial, they're designed for clean burn and anti-knock and all the gasolines are designed for computer fuel injector controlled automobiles. Motorcycles kind of take a back seat to this. So reading a spark plug with today's gasoline isn't going to give you a good reading. Don't go by that. Look at your mileage. You should be getting really good mileage. If you're getting crazy good mileage, you're probably too lean. Plus, as you roll on the throttle and you get into the higher RPM range, if it feels like it's straining and it wants to go but it just can't, you're too lean. If you start getting up into the higher RPM range and you're giving it some throttle and it feels like it's being dragged back, then you're too rich. Again, the easiest indicator to where your mileage is is look at your miles per gallon. High 40s, if not 50 miles per gallon, should be the commonplace for all 650s. Easy to be across there. The 400s, 250s should even be better. They should be in the 60s easily. Folks ask, what's the difference between the TM40 and the TM42 car? For the DR650, the KLR, the TM40 is a preferred choice. You've got a stock motor, even if you've got the high compression, you've got a good exhaust system. The TM40 is more livable with day-to-day -day operation. The TM42 was developed for if we've got cams, if we've got the big valve head with the port, or we got a big board kit. That's a much bigger space we got to fill up, and the TM42 is designed to fill that up properly and get you, again, all the performance you've bargained for. Again, another benefit, one of the great benefits with the TM40, the flat slide carburetors, is we've sure, I'm sure you've all experienced you're getting going along on your KLR or, or your Suzuki and you grab a little too much throttle at the wrong RPM, you get a clunk a clunk of response before the bike starts operating again. And sometimes you'll get going along and it feels like it's got a little oscillation. You're trying to hold steady throttle. You're, you're trying to, you know, behave, go down the road evenly, and the bike wants to go up a little bit, and then it wants to go down a little bit. The flat slide carbs get rid of all of that instantly. You roll the throttle on at low RPM, so it doesn't matter what gear you're in, it starts to deliver now. A little bit, a lot. Whatever you roll on, it's going to give you. It's so much more controllable than the flat than the vacuum operated carbs are. We also hear people saying, "Oh, the flat the flat slide carbs with the accelerator pumps, they're for race use only." What it is is that accelerator pump is designed to give a little kick in the pants to the lower RPMs. It's just when you turn the throttle on, it's a one-time squirt. There's a little 
chrome rod that when we turn the throttle on, we'll see that kind of move down. It gives a one-time squirt to the throat and to the motor, and it's only a momentary boost in RPMs. It doesn't stay squirting all the way through. That'd be just like running down the road with a choke on. It's just gonna flood the motor and not really give you performance. The flat slide carbs, especially with the accelerator pumps, are a preferred upgrade, especially for day-to-day -day street riding. We're proud to be a distributor and market Hippo Hands for this company. It's a great product. It is built really well. The idea behind this is you get your hands behind here, keeps your knuckles, keeps your fingers out of that cold wind blasting on them. Gives you more comfort, reduces fatigue, and allows you to drive much more comfortably when the weather gets foul in this upcoming season. Take a look at what we have online. Get your Hippo Hands today. Thank you. Coming from King TW Showrooms, we want to thank you for watching. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our news channel and newsletter. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, your adventure begins here. Thank you.